Hello everyone, uh, I'm putting this up here just to show YouTube that I am operating within the guidelines of fair use, um, which allows to use segments of material I do not own the rights for in order to criticize and express an opinion. Uh, you know, just as any democratic uh, free speech supporting platform would do. Uh, I'm not going to make any money out of this, and everything I upload here will be for the sole purpose of reviewing, um, critique, and expressing opinions about uh, what's going on and what went on. Um, Some of you may remember uh, this video that I made about Raphael when he was um, about anywhere between two and three years old. Um, he was very sick, and he seemed to suffer from repeated spasms of pain that seemed really acute because he screamed and cried. And in some of these uh, spasms, he held his lower abdominal area. Um, the same day, also in this same video, Andrea says and tells us that she found red sand in the baby's urine that could be blood. And uh, yeah, it didn't look good, to be honest. That's true. And let's just get a short, very short reminder. of. We're watching a movie. He's just getting so mad. He's mad. And like, fall. Okay, so I want to express my opinion here about the conclusion that a child, a toddler, with red residues of sand in his urine, who is obvious, obviously suffering from spasms of pain in which he cries and bites his own fingers and looks so miserable, the notion that he is angry? Hmm. Okay, so obviously Andrea is not a doctor, but I think, I think that conclusion is strange in any case. But let's talk about the fact, number one, he never got to see a doctor. So this boy had to suffer for about, again, in my opinion, from, you know, my simple arithmetic, um, I came to the conclusion that this was about, this lasted for about 10 days. So one, he never got to see a doctor. Two, this situation escalated. So in um, later videos, we see how this child develops a very, very high fever, and these are Andrea's words, but you actually can see it. He is flushed, his cheeks are very red, he has difficulty breathing, uh, he's highly congested, um, he, he looks horrible, and he, it's very, very clear that he is seriously sick. He is not medicated uh, because he doesn't see any doctor, but what I really want to emphasize here is how he was treated throughout this time of being so sick and feeling so bad by his dad. And this segment that I'm going to <clears throat> show, excuse me, right here is about one week into his sickness or illness. Uh, and we know this because they actually say it. And what happens, what do we learn when Raphael has a sudden spasm once again? I'm reminding you, a whole week has gone by. There we go. Oh, there, there's that child. Calm down right now. Calm it. Cool. Wouldn't every child want to suffer for one week at least from some kind of sickness? and then be treated as if he is in, in, in need of being disciplined. Calm down right now. You know, um, in the former video, the one that I uh, already made, um, I'll try to attach it here if I can find it. Uh, even on that day where uh, his mother found uh, red sand in his pee and he was uh, sitting on, on the counter in the kitchen, feeling so horrible. Even in that video, I showed how Hadar treated this child and how menacing and threatening he was to him. And here we see what? So he has, he makes this noise again, this strange howl, 
of pain and he falls back on the ground. Um, that's not normal behavior, but it's treated as if he is being defiant. But let's listen to the rest. Yeah, crying, seriously. Crying, crying, crying. Andrea, for 10 minutes, you try to make him not cry, and he's done after 10 minutes. I just got in there and told him, you be quiet right now. Yeah, so Raphael wakes up very early in the morning. He's crying. Um, and crying and, and whining, and that's obviously not his regular behavior. I'm assuming he's crying from pain or discomfort. This is, again, my assumption. Why else would he cry like that? Um, and this is the way his father deals with him. Um, stop crying. He frightens him. He disciplines him. And the child stops crying. And... If you watch this video, you'll see how proud Hadar is of himself, of being such a manly man who can stop his whining, crying kid from crying with only a few words, uh, with anger, with frightening him, with um, stopping this natural process of crying from pain or discomfort, and he is very, very proud. Um, I don't want to overdo the amount of material that I'm going to put up here. So I'm just going to say that this conversation between them continues. Uh, Raphael evidently. And we learned that after, he, after Raphael stopped crying the first time in the morning, uh, he started again. Um, and then his father went in the room again, but this time was much more adamant and aggressive. And so baby Raphael just stopped crying out of probably what I assume is fear, just fear, not because he did not have any pain anymore. So the next very short segment is going to be the last one in this video. Um, and in this one we see... What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what? So we see here that Andrea turns on the camera just while uh, her son is having one of those spasms again. He screams, he's, he's crying, he looks in, like he's in pain, he looks distressed. And um, Hadar calls out from the bedroom or wherever, what's happening? She says, oh, it's nothing, nothing. Yes, you're right, the, your son just started crying because of a reason that you are not aware of, because nothing happened, but obviously he's feeling something, and this connects to a whole week of sickness, and him having these behaviors, these extraordinary behaviors, and him being sick with a fever, there's a whole picture going on here. It's not nothing happened. And then Hadar calls Raphael to come over there, and you see Raphael running there, and his screams in are increasing while he's running. And that shows me how afraid he is, how, how terrorized he is, because his father is calling him and supposedly he has done something wrong and he's going to be disciplined again. And this whole, I mean, this whole scene here, I am trying not to judge anyone. I'm just bringing the facts as I see them. So. We have the illness, we have the illness that is going on for a while, we don't have a doctor seeing anyone, we don't have medication given, we don't have any special care for this child, and then we also hear about how he is treated every time he cries or shows discomfort or pain or... We don't know what these spasms are, we don't know, but we can't just say that he's crying because of nothing because there is a background story to this. And it seems like by now, they are both, this is what it seems like to me, right? They are both treating his behavior as being defiant, as being a bad boy. As Andrea says, oh, there's that child again. What do you mean? It's not happening out of the blue, right? There's, there's a whole thing that went on throughout this week. And just a few days earlier, he was lying in bed with a high fever. So... You know, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, I really don't know. But it seems to me like this is all the same occasion. 
And you know what? Even if, even if it's not, even, even if what we have here is only the situation of him having blood in his sand and being treated the way he was in the kitchen by his dad, and then a week after we see this happening with the same behaviors, the same spasm, and he's still treated like that with, for, by his dad, and, but now his mother also sees him as a nuisance. And you know, I don't have to remind you this, but he does have a sister. His sister has never, ever, ever been treated this way, ever. She was held up on a pedestal. And it's not like I want that, I wanted that to happen to her, of course not, but I also think it shouldn't have happened to him. Which, and, and it shows, again, that Raphael got the really bad end of the stick in everything, in my opinion. Again, this is all based on my opinion and my perception and the way I understand and see things. It doesn't mean that this is the truth, obviously.